Capricorn friends and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2020 where this month Mars goes retrograde so we're gonna have to readjust our motivation. We're gonna relook at our desires. There's a lot of courage to do things differently or to act in a way that is a bit more direct and courageous and in alignment with our desires but also, your ruling planet Saturn comes out of retrograde this month, which, you know, sometimes it's intense, sometimes it's not. But either way, when the ruling planet is facing forward, there is a little bit of a deep breath that I think is available to whichever sign that happens to be. And this month, it happens to be you. So we'll talk all about that coming up in just a minute. But first, I want to let you know the Autumn Equinox gifts are out. And of course, they are first come, first serve, as always. But they're in the description box down below. Or you can come find them at Storm grace.com and those appointments will book between September and December so if you've been thinking about a check-in or any of that kind of stuff you can definitely get that handled down below as well the eat and greets this month coming up are going to be phenomenal we've got Athen Cimenti coming over a fellow youtuber we're going to talk about sidereal true sidereal astrology with him that Katarnas will be here on the full moon to debunk the archetypes with us as well Gary Caton's coming back getting us ready for mercury retrograde we've got but, um, who else is coming over? Michael Bryan's coming over. Achuta Bava will be here. It is a month of some good visitors over here. All right, Capricorn, let's jump in and break this month down. Right at the beginning of the month on the second, we've got the full moon happening in the energy of Pisces, which is going to light up your third house space. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. A shift needs to happen in this particular energy. Now, in the energy of Pisces, this is an energy of culmination. This is an energy of forgiveness, but it is also an energy that I think asks us to look at where we are suffering because we are not maybe in the right alignment of service to this particular area. It's like I'm suffering here because I'm not being of service. I'm holding on too tight. I'm trying to control things. Um, I think it should be different than it is. And this is a place where you can surrender to win right? This is a wonderful energy under this full moon to see. Where can you surrender to win? And in the third house, this is our thinking, right? Where in your thinking has something been, you've only been seeing it one way or you thought it needs to be, needs to look this way. Your thinking has been this way. So at a very mental level in the third house, this could just be about your thinking, maybe even something that you have been studying. And you're like, I just don't know if this is the right course for me, but you're trying to push and push and push through. And maybe here at the full moon, it's like, ah, I don't know that this is the right thing. Now, the full moon being what it is, some of you could be completing a sale. You could be completing um, a course. You could be certainly making adjustments to that website, to that book, something with your siblings. All third house things are available, but ultimately, I think the quote is surrender to win here because if you put it down, the next right action step will show up and the energy just gets big and it's like, oh, this is the deep breath that I needed here. On the 5th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Libra. This is going to light up the tip top of your chart. So we've got the 10th house lit and on fire. Now, Mercury at the top of the chart likes to talk. He likes to do things. It's busy. We're making decisions. I'm seen because I'm communicating. Libra is beautifully diplomatic up here, bringing that energy of Venus to the table. So anything that you're having to do at work and these relationships are showing up for you, you're going to have a fair amount of passion. You're going to have a fair amount of diplomacy that comes out, making these decisions, handling these business relationships, relationships, Mercury really shows up in your favor here. Now, Mercury is in a Venetian space, absolutely. So it is quite possible that you have a conversation that's a bit flirty. Wouldn't that be a little bit fun? You know, or you go someplace, you know, you remember places, you remember going to places, like you go to a place and it's just wonderful or there's like a romantic vibe that happens there. That's definitely a possibility. But Either way, Mercury is bringing the skills of discernment, communication, decision making. There's a lot of savvy that comes out with this energy as well. On the sixth, we see Venus entering into the energy of Leo. Now, this is going to light up your eighth house space. Venus is a benefic energy. Okay, so, but Venus also, she is the ruling planet 
of Libra in the general for Capricorn. So ruling over your 10th house, but the planet itself moving into your 8th house. The other thing I keep thinking for some of you, it's this psychological death that Venus is helping you cope with in this eighth house because you've been deeply connected to this thing. You know, or maybe there's been a fear around this, but you're changing, you're transitioning, you're coming into something else. So it's this idea or this theme of a death of some variety. Or maybe even this happened for you a couple months ago, you know, um, you, you died off in one way so that you could live in this next way and you're able to do that and we're gonna start to see you in public with that particular energy. The other thing, Venus loves some money. She loves to bring things of value. It's a magnetic energy. So in the eighth house, this could be that loan comes through, the joint resource comes through, something with your partner's money or money that you're connected to that you don't necessarily earn, but it does impact or value you. This could be getting a little bit judged up a little bit here. There's passion, there's fire, there's creativity behind this energy in um, the space of Leo. So I keep thinking too, I'm wondering if what this is, is you're doing, you're having to die off in one way so that you can share your creativity in, in a deeper way. I think that this is a wonderful energy for romance as well. It, it is deep. It is ushy gushy. It is intimate. But in the energy of Leo, you will open your heart space and you will hold your own. You will be on your own, but it's also very, very generous. So even if it's not particularly romance, but if this is soul level connection, if this is deep connection to other people or conversations that you're having, eat that up because that is, it's a lot of love. It just, as I see it, it seems like you're just brimming with a lot of love and it's in a way that is really, really deep. On the 9th, Mars is going to take that retrograde beginning at 28 degrees of Aries and backing all the way up to 15 degrees so that you can map that in your chart. But in the energy of Aries, this lights up your fourth house space. Home, family, real estate, property, that internal psychological foundation that makes you feel secure. As Mars is retrograding through this, first things first, retrogrades take us back. Are you going back home? Are you going back to something with your parents? Are you helping? Are you taking action? Because Mars is our human doing. Are you doing something with or for or around the family, right? Sometimes, I mean, a lot has changed in the world. Some people have just gone back to where their roots were or gone back to where they consider home. Mars is really going to ask you, what's your desire? right? Like, what are we doing? Why are we putting energy here? Is this meeting the desire that we have here? But again, it takes a courageous version of yourself to make the transition back to or to make the transition because Mars is retrograde to see the past, look over your family, look over your parents and get ready to decide that you want something different going forward or what you're going to do going forward. You know what I mean? You've got Venus in in Leo up there in, in the eighth house right now. The sun is in Libra. Mercury's in Libra. These are all connected energies of Venus and the eighth house getting connection for you this month, Capricorn. Is there something that is around death that is really prominent to you this month, whether it's you know, do, do, is there a death of a relative? Is this a psychological death? Is this a shedding and a phoenixing? What is it? Because during this Mars retrograde, you're getting a chance to be courageous and go back to it and become the next person that you want to be or take any actions that need to be taken. Now, traditionally, I suggest that during a Mars retrograde, if you can avoid any elective surgeries or things like that, I would suggest that you do that. Mars is over war. Cutting of the surgeon is war. That would be our warrior. And they're flipped backwards. Now, where I think this is a good idea is if it is a procedure that you had planned forever and a half ago and maybe you couldn't get to it and now this brings you back to it. But of course, that really depends on your individual chart, but that's just kind of a general FYI. In the fourth house as well, if you did need to take any actions in your physical home or to get rid of a property, you could definitely do that as long as the key to a retrograde is really to just go back 
go back and do and finish and all of those things, but not necessarily to begin anything. That's just not where the energy is typically strongest at this time, especially because we've got high retrograde happening right now out there, okay? On the 13th, Jupiter is coming out of retrograde in the energy of Capricorn at 18 degrees. So it's coming out in your sign. So literally something you've been trying to birth forward, something where you've been trying to expand yourself forward. Now it's been, you've been working on it for quite some time. And now as we arrive here and we're at this point in September, it's out, you're ready to go. The blessings can come forward. The opportunities you've had to expand and to grow and to get out there, even if they've been a little bit delayed, now what's going to start happening is that you you're going they're going to start to show up but it's also going to be this place with Jupiter direct now where he's like did you get the training? Do you have the skills that you need? I don't want you being overly confident and in your ego about how great Capricorn is. Do you have what you need to successfully meet the goals? That's going to be the wisdom of Jupiter as, as we look here. So look where that 18 degrees is at in your chart and see what it's been triggering for you and answer the question, do you have what you need and are you ready to meet those goals? On the 17th, we've got a new moon happening in Virgo. So just up here in the ninth house space. At the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention. It's the darkest phase of the moon. So you can sense that something new is coming in. And so you're planting these seeds to say, okay, I'm willing to plant these seeds in the magic of the dark and watch how they bloom and blossom for me. In the ninth house, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, faith, uh, all things expansion. Jupiter just came out of retrograde in your sign. The ability to expand is absolutely here. Now, one of the things that's like getting me is I keep thinking Jupiter is the ruler of your 12th house space of that Sagittarian energy. And I just keep having this sense is, are you Capricorn? What are you birthing this month? What are you bringing out this month that has been unseen? Like we knew it was there maybe, but it's been unseen in a physical sense. And as Jupiter comes out of retrograde, you've got it happening now and this new moon also ushers you in new training new connections new expansion of this particular area of your life now if that's not you and it's just mundane publish that video put it out start the website uh, travel learn that language whatever it is pray pray reevaluate your faith you've been in a heavy retrograde okay what have you learned on the other side and allow that expansion and allow that new moon to bring you forward lovely new space on the 22nd we've got the sun now entering into the energy of libra joining mercury in the 10th house so you're motivated up here it's busy and if this is not your career like your you know going to work or not going to work this is about what do we know you as in the world right what do you have to give? What do we call you? Did you, were you married and now you're not married? So we call you something else. Did you used to do accounting and now you're the yoga teacher? What is it that we know you as under this particular sun energy? And what relationships have you established to really enliven this connection? It is a social month for you, Capricorn. I don't want you to make any mistake about it. The Venetian energy flying around your chart is really very social for you this month for sure. On the 27th, we have got Mercury leaving Libra, entering into the energy of Scorpio, lighting up your 11th house zone. And this is the month. This is the month, Capricorn, with that Mercury and Scorpio. First of all, it makes you a very strong observer of your life, an observer of your patterns, an observer of what's going on at a deep level. It's not superficial at all. Where you're going to be looking over things is in this 11th house. The very first thing I think are friends and organizations. Where have you been associating? Do you have a whole bunch of acquaintances going on? Because you may be deciding with this Mercury energy here, I can't have all of this acquaintance busy going on, business going on. I want deep things because the acquaintance make me heavy they weigh me down and I can't expand if I weigh too much right so this could definitely be that energy with mercury here that that's what's going on but I also think Capricorn it takes you deeper into your emotions into the the interpersonal and interconnected relationship you have with what you want for your future 
right? For your long range plans, goals, your ambitions, your desires down the road. Mercury and Scorpio in this 11th house is asking you to get deep, to get some depth on getting connected to what that is. For somebody, I am not sure who this is, but you are going to court. This is a court case. You are, this is Scorpio. You are jointly connected to another human being and this is court. This looks like court for you. Please tell me if that's you in the comment section down below. Okay, but Mercury here is getting to the depth of something in this long range plan, goal, dream, design space. Now, for those of you that are not going to court, this looks like as well, it could definitely be something in the socials, right? Are you sharing of yourself at a deeper level than you've been able to connect to before? It's been a handful of months. We're over halfway through this year. You've changed. You've shed. You've you've had psychological shifts that have brought you new perspectives. And maybe now you're ready to talk about them and to share them with that energy of Mercury. As we close out this month on the 29th, we've got Saturn, your ruling planet, coming out of retrograde, of course, in your sign at 25 degrees. Now, Saturn out of retrograde. When he was retrograde, first of all, he's been working on you for a few years, right? Really coming around, maturing you. Some of you have, have done the Saturn return. Um, so you've come to the next chapter of your life. But now as Saturn comes out of retrograde, he's like, have you learned how to be mature? how to come to this table more maturely because as he's out of retrograde now, you, how you show up to relationships, how you behave, the way that you take care of your body, all of these things that are very much so centered in how you participate in your own life and also how we know you, right? That new name that we call you. All of these are going to come strongly into focus. Now, as we get into October as well, we will, we will welcome Pluto out of retrograde. So this full change of Capricorn, which I'm telling you, Caps, I know for some of y'all, it has been a pressuresome couple years, but diamonds are made under pressure, baby. Okay, that is all I want to tell you, Capricorn. So whatever it has looked like for you, as Saturn is out of retrograde here, he's ready for you to demonstrate the mastery that he's put so much focus into helping you you be disciplined about so that you can be at this next level okay the work has been worth it the blessings will come because Saturn does acknowledge hard work he does acknowledge hard work so I'm telling you so many of the things that maybe you even had doubts about this last couple years especially in your own capability or in your relationships that feeling of like it's never gonna work out how could this ever work out Saturn sees you Jupiter sees you Okay, those blessings will start to come, but they're definitely going to demand your participation in a moving forward kind of way as we get to the end of this month. Oh, I got all serious for a minute, Caps. Okay, I love you guys so much. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful month. I look forward to seeing you in the Autumn Equinox appointments, also in the Eat and Greets, and of course, just around the channel. I love you guys. I'll see you next month. Bye, everyone.